What a great week. Three big wins, probably. Leicester, Carabag, and surely Arsenal. Yes, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Then there's, of course, the small match of the FA Cup we need to, to get them back for. Everyone thought we were going to win that game, Ben. And we didn't, actually, when you saw the teams. We were even more confident we were going to go and win that game. So just a little reminder that when you're on that pitch, anything can happen in 90 minutes. But it has begun very well indeed. Let's start with Leicester. Um, something we saw from there, a little bit weird. Turns out Aspelacueta is quite good at crossing, uh, yeah. but only when there's Alvaro Morata in the middle. Yeah, well, this is something that doesn't happen by coincidence. Once Aspi gets in this area, he's looking for one thing. He's got two choices. He can play the ball out wide, or he can get the ball in the box, or actually probably keep possession. But again, he's putting the ball into that, that danger area. And but it's a recurring theme, isn't it? It's a Everton recurring as well. theme. It, absolutely. Listen, this, like I said, this does not happen by accident. It's about putting the ball there, but it's all about Morata. The ball has got to be good, but if Morata's moving, see that the goal against Burnley, he's on his way in front of the marker before the ball even gets there. So the movement's brilliant, the cross is good, and it's about him finishing off. Aspilicueta is doing that more and more often, though, getting into that sort of inside position rather than wide, wide right. Um, and Golo Kante, I mean, we thought he was good here against Everton. Oh, Leicester was ridiculous. Well, we've become a little complacent about N'Golo. I mean, he's we, everywhere. He is an 8 out of 10 every single game. Sometimes a 9, sometimes a, a 9 and a half, but always an 8. You're never going to get below an 8. And I think because he puts in that performance, I thought it was Morata's best game, actually, for Chelsea. I, I, I gave him the nod against N'Golo, but uh, you can't complain whenever he gets a man of the match award because the boy is he's absolutely everywhere, as the stats... Show. You, you know, never know when he's going to pop up. He no. won every single one of his interceptions, didn't he? Every one of his tackles. It was ridiculous. His yes, numbers hundred percent everywhere. Um, but he, he, what he does, it, Leicester, when the year they won the title, he allowed Vardy to be Vardy, Mares to be Mares, even Drinkwater to be Drinkwater, really, because his work, his industry, and how he allowed, allowed other players to go and play was remarkable. And he's doing something very, very similar. But you're right, he pops up everywhere. Instant cult hero here at Stamford Bridge. Uh, his full home and European debut, Davide Zabacosta. Yes. Zaba, I think they call him in the dressing room right? already. Okay. That seems to be his nickname, very original. <laughs> did he mean it? He didn't, did he? You no, can tell from the eyes. No, he didn't. And it's a dreadful cross. Uh, it's, the best. Um, it's a brilliant strike, but a dreadful. You can see far post. There's two bodies in the box. He's trying to whip it around. And it's come off his boot completely the wrong way. But they all count, Benjamin. They all count. I scored one like that once. Mm, from even <laughs> further out. Uh, ChelseaFC.com, by the way, for the did he mean it. Have a look at our uh, chosen five there. Yeah. We've got a couple of others to look at here. You and I were commentating uh, back on, I think it was Halloween 2006 when Frank Lampard did that. Neither of us thought he meant it. I actually seen it playing again on Chelsea TV. I think Jason Candy says it was a freak. Um, but I'm here to say that it wasn't. And he well, pulled Frank, us both up on it afterwards. Frank wasn't happy about this. And I think you can see why we've said he doesn't mean it. There's no one in the box to cross to him, but that was what he said. But there's only one thing I can do there, and I've got to try and shoot, I've got to try and bend it in the key. Listen, Frank is capable of doing it. And of course, then there's Didier Drogba. First game of the season, we went 1 0 down against Hull. He scored a free kick, Didier. And he then never meant second. this. He never meant that. He's trying to think that towards that far post. Late winner, wasn't it, as well? It was well. a late winner. We didn't play particularly well that day, but. We took all three points, so Ben, who cares who means them, as long as they go in the back of the net. Just on the did he mean it, um, you may well have seen Willie Caballero uh, having a bit of fun with Victor Moses on the bench afterwards. Yes. Um, <laughs> he's going to have to learn to cross like that, isn't he? Moses is just like kidding well. He said there's a bit of competition for Victor now, which is something that he hasn't really had, so I think that's what the lads might have been saying. And he's already got a song, he scores when he wants, a new cult hero is born. Now, I tell you, somebody who definitely meant something they did. Callum Hudson-Odoi, this free kick against Carabag. 5-0 it was on their return to the UEFA Youth League. Absolutely brilliant. The reason we're, that. Of course he's meant it, and the reason we're showing you it is because we brought you earlier in the week on Chelsea TV, him at Cobham, training. Bag of balls, at the end, practice. It's about the technique. Once you, have, you keep doing the repetition, repetition, Eventually, you're going to get things right, and of course, that's what he did in the uh, in the game. So, well done, him. Keep a look out for him live on Chelsea TV throughout this season. Callum Hudson Odoi is really good. So is Mark Gurhey. Look at this goal. This was the opener against Arsenal. Chelsea absolutely battered that's them. That's a beautiful shot. About that. Yeah. Okay, this is a centre me. half, by the way, and it reminded us of a centre forward <laughs> who we all love, called Mark Hughes. In fact, Mark Gurhey is very nearly an anagram of Mark Hughes. And the week has got even better for young Mark because he's signed a new pro deal. 
after scoring that goal. Not because of it, but well done him. Okay, social media time and initiation songs. Belated ones because the three people we're going to look at were not on tour, at least one of them was, but right at the end of it. Let's start with Zappa Costa. Did he mean to sing like this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was Papa Americano, apparently, uh, pretty dreadful. Uh, Baki Yoko did some French rapping. <laughs> And Tony Rudiger <laughs> did this. I'm a young money millionaire trapper in Nigeria. So we found his soft spot, Jason. Uh, I mean, when when he laughs like that, when it, you can see exactly how much he enjoyed it, you know tears are rolling down his face as well. So um, he, he enjoyed it. That was the best bit of the, the whole video for me. Mm, but not as good as... Say it. Game <laughs> of loans. Not a lot this week, actually. Danilo Pantic scored for Partizan Belgrade. Jeremy Bogart played all 90 minutes for Ari at Birmingham, so well done him. And Jamal Blackman kept a clean sheet. Yeah. Sheffield United up to third in the championship. Fabulous, they won at Bolton, so well done, Jamal. Right, last week we set you a bit of a trivia test ahead of the Leicester game. We showed you this 11 with some blanks in it, a composite 11 of Chelsea and Leicester City, and asked to see who the first quickest, cleverest people were who could get in and fill in the blanks. There were lots of right answers, and the most common ones were Robert Huth, Dennis Wise in midfield, and Keith Weller up front. Well done to Theo Ferguson, Chase O'Brien, Steele, Abdullah Korma, Ethan Pang, and Ryan N. Well done. Brilliant. OK, Arsenal. Mm. Conte's lost to Wenger three times. Everything feels like a Chelsea win. On form. Yes. They play Thursday night, Chelsea Tuesday night. Yes. Yeah, there's all of that, Ben. Um, like I said at the top of the show, the FA Cup final still very fresh in everyone's memories. Um, the 3-0 defeat was actually the turning point at uh, the Emirates last season when we got um, completely rolled over at half-time. Then the, 10 minutes into the second half, we changed it three at the back, and of course, um, we know what happened after that. So what are you going to do with your team? Are you bring well, Hazard back in? I, I am going to start Hazard. I think the way that he has managed Hazard over the last two games suggests to me that he's rested him, but had enough game time to get him ready and sharp as much as he can for Arsenal. He's had to come on two some appearances the last two games. And you're keeping yeah. Rudiger. I'm going to keep Rudiger. I would be loath to change anything at the back. Things have gone so well. We've had three tough games. I feel for Gary, but when you're out on the side and then the other team goes on and win, not just wins but plays well and actually looks tight at the back, why would you change it? Right, comment below on what your team would be. Do you agree with yeah. him or think he's an idiot? Probably the latter. Um, <laughs> William Hill bet we're going to go with the same thing we did last week because yeah. it worked. We had Alvaro yeah. Morata to score in a Chelsea win and he did mm. and they did. So it's the same again this week. Was six to four, now seven to four. Safe money. So a little bit of fun. What you can do, you can comment below. How many times did Angola Kante pop up in this programme? He is everywhere. But how many times did he pop up on our screens, Ben? Millions. That's what you've got to do. And we'll read out all the answers next week. As many as he did up at the KP, probably. So Chelsea and Arsenal, I'm going 4-0. Home win, Jase. 2-0. See ya.
Liverpool go! And it's headed in by Kurt Zuma! Chelsea get the breakthrough. Can Alonso turn it in? Yes, he can! It's a terrific goal.